Look, CICD is so easy. You can just click through the portal and we'll pre-populate your project with an Azure pipeline and it'll do all the steps and deploy. Great, right? Yeah, that's useful for like a week and then you go into production and you're like, nah, this is way more complicated. Hey there, my name is Julie. I'm an engineer at Microsoft and today I want to walk you through some real world uh, pipeline YAMLs and how you can optimize and reuse uh, code with uh, YAML templates, um, how you can do sort of environment specific tasks. I'm going to show you my workflow where I um, automatically generate uh, change logs and sort of tag my projects, which are also signed and push to Git and they trigger all these different workflows. And um, importantly, the Docker image that is going to be deployed is going to be scanned and tested um, uh, when it goes to the main branch and when it goes into production, actually, it's going to grab an existing image, right? So we're going to do a little bit of promotion. Um, this will come across as a little bit complicated, but actually this is a simple pipeline. Um, in future videos, I want to add more things like stages, Kubernetes, um, but let's start with something that already exists and is kind of easy to follow. Okay, uh, final note before we start. I'm going to use Azure Pipelines and not GitHub Actions. It is April 2021 and GitHub Actions are nowhere near mature enough uh, for my use cases, right? So security is really important. And uh, for this video, templating is really important. Somebody posted a month ago, yeah, it still doesn't exist. Um, and basically you would have to publish a distinct GitHub action in order to, to reuse code. No, thank you. Okay, so let's look at the original pipeline very briefly. Um, it is one long YAML file and it has two stages. And these jobs all run in parallel. Um, the idea being that this should run faster if some of the things are running in parallel. Um, and then we have a deploy stage. And so how it knows to deploy, let me just open up the YAML file. Um, development or production, it's based on the branch names. And you'll see there's lots and lots of variables set at the top and they will be replaced uh, if it's a release branch. And there's only one step that says basically um, deploy. And so um, I eh, feel that way about this pipeline. It's kind of too long. Um, and I made this, I think the first time I was really learning sort of Azure DevOps, um, trying to give it a chance and not just say I miss Jenkins. And, um, although I am happy with parts of this that I got to clean up very well, I think it could be better. And that's actually the goal for this, uh, video. I'm going to show you now how I do releases, especially with versioning. Um, and it's pretty cool with standard version. Um, so I'm in this repo, I'm on the main branch right now. I don't have branch protection on it because I'm going to push directly to main as an admin. Um, I'll set up uh, protection later for the production branch. Um, but for now, let's look at the Git log and you'll see that actually, um, I have everything, uh, on my remote already. That's why you see origin slash main. Um, and the last two commits, you'll see that they're prefixed with a fix. And then there's a feature as well. And so because the last tag was 071, right? The next one will be 080. It's not gonna have a dot one appended to it despite the fact that there's a fix here because there wasn't a release in between. Um, so what I have is something called standard version and I can just run standard version cause I've installed it globally on my machine um, and release as minor and I'm going to sign this. And what it's gonna do is take based on the git log, it will bump everything and generate a change log for me and I need my key. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, so now I have my uh, Yubi key. in the monitor because I'm out of slots. Okay, so that's all I did. And uh, we can look at it in here because it's a little bit easier, um, I think. Preview. And you can see that it generated the changelog automatically for me and linked it to the commits. 
Um, super cool. Um, you have to be pedantic about your uh, commit messages, but you save a lot of time by doing that. So it also tells me to just do a push, follow tags, origin main. And I have to do that again to get the credentials to actually be able to push to git.com, github.com rather. Okay, so I just made a push. And so I'm actually gonna expect the pipelines to run. And this one is for CI. Um, so it should build the uh, dev container. Um, and uh, this will be interesting. So what I did do in terms of triggers is that you'll see that this is being triggered by the tag being pushed. And you'll see that it actually skips the CI, the tests. I don't need to do that because the assumption is that um, it's going to already be tested. Although this one was caught first, right? You can see here the uh, Git shards are the same. So this will be the one that will actually be doing the testing uh, when it's sort of uh, passed. Um, now that I'm looking at it, it's probably not a, a ideal. Theoretically, this could fail first and then the tag will go in, but that's okay. Um, for now, for me and my use case, you probably want to do it a little bit differently. Okay, so if we go back, somewhere there's a release, right? And um, I actually didn't show uh, the various apps. So I will do that very briefly right now. And you can see that the dev version is running 071 and the prod is still running 070, which still has a bug. Um, this says nine seconds, cause it's a bug and we can read the docs more. And so this one's actually more appropriate. Um, and it deployed a few minutes ago, and so it's only three minutes old. So this is uh, working on dev. So what I want to do is make them both actually go to 080. Um, and if this is still, okay, it's still deploying. That's why, apparently. Let's go and just double check. Okay, the asset pipeline. Um, since this said it only finished actually 40 seconds ago, that's why this is old. Um, so eventually this will cycle through. I don't know if I should just hit refresh, refresh over and over, but this should eventually cycle through and say 080. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. I actually have two pipelines. One is called dev and one is called production. Um, and if I come over here, um, you'll see that actually it looks very different um, from before. Um, there's a lot of subfolders uh, with different things and I'm gonna switch over to VS Code because it's a little bit nicer um, to show you the difference. So like my usual pedantic self, everything is sort of documented, um, but I'm gonna walk you through that right now. So um, you can see that uh, I have some variables um, and they are actually a lot um, and I've moved them over to uh, a separate file. So I have some static variables here, which I could put in a variable group, but I don't like hiding things, right? I like it as close as possible to Git. So when I'm debugging, I can just look at it here instead of going and trying to find stuff then in here. Um, and you'll see that there's actually lots of random things that I have in here that I should probably one day clean up. Um, it's good use case if you have things that are sort of shared, um, but uh, this particular project doesn't have that. So like in the previous pipeline, all this like uh, really wordy um, code to just figure out if something is production or if it's a Git tag or if it's a fork, etc. I've put in um, its own sort of separate file. This is reused and it's just easier to see. Uh, one thing that is new that I think the old pipeline didn't quite have is um, this new variable called is trusted um, CI. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know I'm a stickler for security. And although some platforms have built in methods such that uh, pull requests or especially from forks don't have access to your secrets, I like it doesn't hurt to check yourself, right? So I do that. Um, basically what I want is that uh, only events triggered by humans um, will sort of deploy, right? Uh, or have access to those secrets. So if it's a fork, if it's a PR, or even if it's scheduled, that's me being like maybe paranoid. I don't wanna yeah, give it access to stuff. Um, the other thing that is new is down here. 
you will see that there is a variable called um, image tag that depends on whether or not it is a git tag that's actually pushed. So the default is I'm just going to use dev um, as the tag for the image. Um, but if it is actually a tag, I'm going to take it from the git tag that was pushed and just remove the V. So if it's V 1.0, you would see like 1.0. Um, what you will see is that these pipelines, so dev or production, um, depending upon uh, yeah, which one it is, um, it will also then uh, load uh, variables, right? So this is uh, all suffixed with dev for dev variables. Um, and yeah, so that's it for variables. So I keep no noticing random things and I'm just gonna publish this video. I'm not gonna fix it and then re-record. Um, so initially this was named actually CI for a while. And um, I had here like, okay, is it main? Is it production, etc. cetera? Um, but actually now that it is only um, dev, I don't need this like at all. Um, and there was something actually interesting and I think you see it in the production pipeline. So uh, when I was originally splitting it up like this, uh, what I painfully discovered is that I can't put this in the global scope where uh, over here, I had to put it in the stage scope. And so my guess is that it has to do with all these different sort of conditions and how they're processed. So when you see the curly braces, um, that is actually evaluated at uh, template build time when you know Azure Pipelines figures out, okay, let's take all these YAML files and what do you actually want? So what I'm gonna do right now, and I'll push this afterwards, um, is I'm just gonna get rid of this uh, variables. I don't need in stage. Um, I should probably cut this out of the video, uh, but I will forget if I don't do this. So let's do that. Dev is this, I don't ever need this. And I'll explain in a second. Um, actually, dev.yaml, so I don't need this either. Um, so why I ended up actually, instead of CI uh, YAML and um, CD YAML, why I have dev and production. So if you are very astute, you'll notice that I'm recording this actually almost a week later um, than the first bits. And that's cause yeah, I only work on things um, every now and then. Anyway, so um, if you've watched some of the talks that I've given on CI CD, that my preference is actually almost always for a YAML file per environment. It's just easier to see like what's going on. And one of the reasons why the CI uh, YAML eventually became dev YAML was that I actually did want to deploy to dev stage, right? And then it was like, it felt weird. Should I put that in the CI YAML? It didn't quite, yeah, feel right to me. And so I just put it um, here as well in this formerly CI YAML now called dev YAML. Um, I split up the app service deployment into its own job, and you'll see that there's a few sort of here. Uh, most of them are actually not really reused, um, but it was just easier to keep uh, these files, the dev YAML and the production YAML slim. Um, and so I moved a couple things over into uh, jobs. So let's look at um, first kind of, okay, what we're doing. So in dev, um, I run some tests. And actually, if you go to production, you'll see that it's very slim and like the only thing it does is actually deploy. It doesn't run any tests and it doesn't um, build any Docker images because basically it's going to grab something that already exists in the container registry and assume that it's okay, right? That it's secure and that it works because yeah, tests from before. So going back to dev, um, tests should be no surprise. It's pretty much like what we had before. Um, and if we go back, the next stage is the Docker build stage. Okay. So this is the Docker stage, which, uh, yeah, was a lot of fun. Um, but let me first explain the build and scan job. I wanted to test, uh, security or test for security issues before I actually pushed it to the Azure container registry. Azure container registry has a security scan, but obviously we need the image in order to scan it. So you have to push it first. And so it's reactive, basically like security. So this is proactive. If this fails, right. And I'm using the snake API, then I don't want to save like whatsoever. And then of course the whole pipeline fails and never gets um, saved. So once I know it's okay, I actually want to build this image, tag it properly and push it to Azure container registry. 
So the next part is the whole build and push. There is this built-in task. It like basically takes um, as a multi-line string various tags. Um, it totally did not work for me um, and like just put in build numbers, etc. And I think in part because I have this sort of if here, um, whether or not it should include the tag. Uh, because remember, if it is a image in intended for production, um, I'm not going to use the git sha on top. I'm going to use the version number from the git tag itself. So I needed a little bit of logic. Um, to be fair, I think the build and push does a couple more things, like adds labels and, and a bunch of other things. But um, I've always annoyed, like not really liked this task um, because, yeah, it's just weird for me to have inputs. You have to tell the repository and then the various tags, like kind of... I don't know, I'm kind of old school and this is super easy and I do this on the command line on my computer. So this works, yeah, it works. Um, ultimately, when I cleaned it up, I only had one image tag, but still I just was like, I don't need the build and push tag. Um, I know how to do that myself. So uh, once that is done, then I log out and this is the part where I lock the production image again to keep it immutable um, because it's running in production. Okay, so going back to dev.yaml, you'll see that I have a deploy stage because if it's the main branch, I want it to actually go into um, development. And so you'll have a bit of reuse anyway of certain stages and steps in your pipelines. And again, instead of doing CI CD, I ended up going with the environment. Um, and these can run in parallel, the app service and the asset pipeline. Um, now is a good time to actually explain what that is. So if we come back here, we have, I added, uh, wrong page, <laughs> main repo. Um, I added a um, architecture diagram of what this looks like. So the web app itself, it has all the images and CSS that it needs, but a common pattern is actually for um, certain things that are static, like images and CSS, you can actually load them from object storage. And then to be really like sort of, yeah, I'm icing on the top, you can uh, put a content delivery network in front of that. And so this application has an environment variable that will um, that it uses to determine where do I pull these um, assets from. And you can always use the um, domain itself if you want to. And this part, again, can run independently because the assets themselves are also in the web app. So going back here, let's just look briefly at what that looks like. Super simple. It doesn't really do anything. Um, it just deploys the container. Container. Um, the image tag might change, right? So um, it might change using the uh, version from the package JSON, um, and that for me is the way that I could deploy to production multiple times um, using the same image version, right? If I only react to the git tag event, I'd have to override that event over and over and over. Um, and so for uh, production, I will just grab. Ah, from the package JSON, the version. Uh, append SHA, I just decided to put it somewhere else. Uh, where is it? Um, I can't read. Append SHA. So, and what this does is that it uses the, um, the Git SHA and the built-in variable from Azure Pipelines is like that long, nasty, I think 40 character string. I only need this bit. So I think I submitted feedback ages ago that we need to offer the short version. Yeah, they didn't do it. So I do it by hand. And so I don't do it when it's production or tag. This is a bit me being pedantic. Um, and uh, yeah, so both when I build the image, I need to tag it with that SHA. And when I deploy it, I need to know like what that SHA is. Um, so once I've done that, that works. So this is the production pipeline, pretty much the same. Um, the only thing is, again, we're not doing any tests and we're not doing any Docker builds because what we're assuming is that we're promoting an image um, from uh, a previous step. So I'm not rebuilding it. And yeah, that was easy. The last thing I want to say is that it's not done, right? So if I run this command, I want to see what um, tags I have in the container registry. And what I had done before was that I would just constantly use the dev tag. Um, that also has its consequences uh, because you're constantly overwriting it. There's still an image there that doesn't get deleted, right? Um, and uh, Azure Container Registry you calls them, I think, untagged images, which you'll see by the manifest. Anyway, um, as part of this refactoring, I switched over. And like I said, this is the built-in variable, which I think is nasty. I like them yeah, short and sweet, so I use this. Um, 
regardless of which git sha you have, you're going to have to clean them up. So by hand, obviously I'm going to delete these, um, but in production, you're going to have to come up with a strategy to clean these up. Um, so that's going to be some scripting and maybe I'll do it. Maybe I don't. Microsoft pays for this account. So I'll just clean it up every now and then and it's all good. Um, but as I tell my customers, I don't give you free fish. I just teach you how to fish. And I think there's actually already a lot of free fish in this repository. So figure it out, clean it up. And, um, yeah, I think the last thing I want to say is that these are very opinionated pipelines. This is kind of like my workflow. Um, you saw that I automated change logs. Um, I pushed to production. Um, I applied some, uh, get protection rules. Um, but you also saw that I kind of just forced push to um, the main branch because I was trying to clean and fix up this bug and just combine the commits to make the change log nicer. And with that, we have this sort of simple um, pipeline workflow with a simple image promotion um, process. So in a future video, what I want to do is actually do three uh, stages, right? Or three different environments of so dev environment, which is probably unstable because every time the main branch gets pushed to, then it would just, um, yeah, redeploy. Um, a staging environment, which is a bit more stable, and that's what you would use for uh, pre-pod, right? Before you actually then say, I'm going to go into production, um, and both staging and uh, production would obviously grab images from previous um, environments or, or build runs. Actually, before that, <laughs> I'm going to do uh, a series of videos on um, other infrastructure as codes, right? Um, so Pulumi and, uh, I need to try bicep. Um, and so that is actually, those two are going to be the videos I'm hoping to record next week, which I can do, um, during work hours, uh, which I'll explain then, but, um, probably do that first and then do the cluster. So without further ado, I'm hoping I can finally publish this video and then you guys have something to, uh, watch um, this week and hopefully it's semi-entertaining.